Horace Tanaka? A lot of people, when they're doing product photography, want their products to be tack sharp from front to back and not have, you know, this nice shallow depth of field that you'd use in more artistic photography. So if you were to photograph this model horse, which needs about uh, five inches depth of field. So let's first measure from the subject to the nodal point of the lens. And that works out to about 17 inches. And let's see, at, we're going to be shooting at a 70 millimeter focal length. So with those numbers, if you plug it into this depth of field calculator from Martin Bailey, it says that at 17 inches, at a, an aperture of f11, our depth of field is only less than an inch, which isn't good enough. So let's try it at f16 instead and see how much better we do. And it shows it's just one and a quarter inches, which still isn't good enough. Not even close, really. To get a depth of field that's deep enough, I have to shorten the focal length and move the camera back. And only then can we get a deep enough depth of field. But of course that leaves our product way too small in the photo. Photography is all about trade-offs. You can never get all the variables to move the way that you want. But if you want to take a product photo that's tack sharp front to back, there's a way you can seem to achieve that. And I'll go over how after this short message that helps support this YouTube channel. Welcome back. You can have your entire product in focus if you use focus bracketing, sometimes called focus stacking. Now, you may have done some HDR photos where you take multiple exposures of the same scene, then use HDR software to tone map the exposures into one lower contrast photo. Focus stacking is pretty similar. In this case, you take several shots, each one with a different focus distance, and then you combine them together in post to make one completely in-focus photo. Now there are a couple of ways to do this, and the first way I'll show you seems pretty obvious. Put your camera on a tripod, and then for each shot you take, you change the focus. So let's give that a try first. So here's the camera setup. I've got this uh, Canon 5D Mark II full frame sensor, and a 24 to 70 uh, lens set to 70 millimeters to get the composition I want. Now to do this focus bracketing, you really have to set the focus consistently or change the focus consistently between shots. That's pretty hard to do if you're fiddling with a focus ring. So instead I have the camera connected over USB to this laptop where I'm running the EOS software that came with the camera. And with that I'll be able to change the focus just by clicking buttons. And so I can change the focus more consistently between shots. Okay, we start by focusing in on the closest part of this horse to the camera, which is its foreleg here. So now let's click these buttons until we get into focus. So now its foreleg is in focus, so I'll close out live view, and I'll take the first shot. Okay, so that's our first shot. You can see that its foreleg is in nice focus, but the farthest point, which is its tail, is definitely out of focus. So now I need to decide how much to move the focus in and that has to be a bit of a guess so let's see how things start to get out of focus here okay we can see the spots on its leg are definitely out of focus so let's get that in focus I'll hit this double arrow to go in I hit it again so it looks like this part of its leg is in focus now so I'll consider that to be our next shot so that was two clicks of this double arrow so we'll do that each time. Close out live view, take the next shot. So there we go, bring in live view again. Hit the double arrow twice, close out live view, take the next shot. Okay, and then I'll just keep doing this process until the tip of its tail is in focus and then I'm done. Okay, we're getting very close to getting that tail in focus. I do this manually. Okay, 
I'll take the last shot. And so that's it. Those are all our photos. Let's get them into Lightroom and then into Photoshop. I've imported all the photos into Lightroom. So let's do a couple of little corrections here. The lens correction. We'll do the automatic profile correction and remove chromatic aberration. And then we'll take that and sync it up to all the other photos in this film strip. And then we'll export them as full resolution Photoshop files. Okay, I'll export them all. Okay, now we're in Photoshop and we need to do this um, focus bracketing in two steps. The first step is to align them. And I find the easiest way to do this, even though there's more than one way, is to use the photo merge uh, script, which is normally what we use to do um, panoramas, but it's really good at aligning things for focus bracketing too. Here it is in output. We'll select all the files and turn off blend images together because that's really for panoramas. We'll keep it at auto and we'll say OK and let it churn. It's going to take a little time. All right, we're just about coming to the end of the alignment process. Okay, now all the images are aligned. Here are all the Photoshop layers, and if we we can see that this is the one with the foreleg in focus, and if we turn that off, we can see us moving farther and farther back in focus until we get to the last one where the tail's in focus, but the foreleg is out of focus. So let's turn all those on and select all the layers. So that was step one, aligning all the images, and Let's now go to step two, which is going to the edit menu. Then you say auto blend layers. Now choose stack images, not panorama. Seamless tones and colors turned on. And we'll say OK and we'll let it turn on that. And it's finished. So let's take a close look. We'll zoom in to 100% here. Here's a foreleg in focus. Go down its body. We see all its spots in focus. And we go all the way to the tail, and the tail's in focus. Everything is in focus. And so that is our aligned image. Now let's try focus stacking in a different way. Now let's look at a second way to do this. Now instead of changing the distance of the focal plane from the camera between each shot, this time we're actually going to move the camera and keep the focal distance the same. And so by moving the camera, we're moving the uh, focal plane back and forth across the subject. Now you can't really reliably do it just by moving your, you know, scooting your tripod forward between shots. What you really need is a focusing rail. Now, this is not a focusing rail. This is a nodal slider. Uh, the same one you saw if you watched the uh, um, video I did on panoramas where I use this. But uh, it's pretty similar to a focusing rail. A real focusing rail will actually have a worm gear that goes uh, along the length, so you turn a knob to move the camera. This one is, doesn't have that, and it's also a little bit short, but uh, it, can, it gives us the right idea here. So what you do is you mount your Arco Swiss head sideways, and in this case it's actually an adapter to an Arco Swiss head, and you put the nodal slider in, or the focusing rail if you had a real one, and then you just mount the camera on the back. And now your camera is free to move back and forth along that rail very accurately. So let's start. We'll start by moving the focusing rail all the way forward. So I'm gradually going to move the camera back as I take each shot. Uh, but how much should I move it back? Well, we know the depth of field is roughly three quarters of an inch. And uh, I think it's fairly safe to just divide that by two and move your camera back by that amount. That way it gets a nice overlap in the depths of field as you move the camera back. So uh, that'll be roughly uh, three eighths of an inch that'll move it between shots. First thing to do is to focus on the farthest point of this horse and that is the tail. So let's zoom way in with live view here. And I'll just focus it manually. So it looks like it's about there. Okay, now get rid of the live view here. So we can take the first shot there. Now I'll move it 3 eighths of an inch. 
Now a real nodal slider will have a ruler built into it, so that makes that a lot more practical. Okay. And now, because I'm moving the camera, I'm not changing focus. So I can just move on to the next shot. Now, of course, the horse will become smaller and smaller as we move the camera back, but we're going to align the images anyway, so it'll take care, Photoshop will take care of that. Now let's just continue. Here, I need to make sure of where the focus is on the front foreleg and it is really close now so now I'll just inch it back a little and there it is that'll be our last shot so now we have all the shots let's take it into Photoshop all right let's get these photos into Photoshop now you once again use photo merge and choose these files I exported from Lightroom. Again, turn off blend images together. And let's do the first step of aligning them, just like when we were changing the focus to uh, uh, get all these different uh, images. Okay, here's all our images. And once again, here's the one where we're focused on the tail. And as we turn off different layers, we can see the focus getting closer and closer to the front. And we no longer see them getting smaller as we move towards uh, the front because Photoshop has already aligned them. Select all layers first. Go to the edit menu, choose auto blend layers, stack images, okay. And let it churn. And there we go. Now let's, uh, to reduce the memory, let's merge all the layers. Okay, now let's take a good look at 100%. And here we see front foreleg in focus, all the spots in focus, and the tail in focus, just like when we change the focus to get this. But notice, there's a little problem here. If you see this sort of subtle horizon line I have in the background, you'll notice it's been sort of mangled with something we didn't see when we were changing focus. And the reason is, and let's uh, get all the layers back, and I'm going to turn off all the layer masks so that we can see the entire layers. But if you notice, as we move the camera, the perspective changes. In other words, the horizon line gradually moves because, oops, because we're actually changing perspective. Once again, let's bring all these layers back. So you really do have to be careful when you use this method to um, not have anything besides the subject. And so we're gonna try this again, but this time with a more appropriate subject. What's, real, what's really a more appropriate situation to use the focusing rail is when you only have your subject, nothing else around it, no horizon line, nothing. And so that's the situation I've set up here. This time, instead of the horse, I've put in a watch. And um, instead of shooting across it, towards the background, I'm going to be shooting almost straight down on it. That way you only get the surface that it's sitting on. And this should work really well. Now I'm much closer now and I calculated the depth of field to be uh, 0.32 inches. So I'm going to move the focusing rail uh, one eighth of an inch. That's a little less than half of that amount. If I was using metric this would be a heck of a lot easier, but uh, here we are. My steel tape only has the English system on it, unfortunately. Okay, so let's get started. I'm focused on the bottom part of the watch that I can see here. And then I'll keep moving up one eighth of an inch at a time until the, the top of the face of the watch is in focus. So here we go. Get rid of live view. 
and take the first shot. Okay, now I'm just going to eyeball one eighth of an inch because that's not too hard to do. Next shot. Okay, now let's go through the same thing again by first aligning all the photos of the watch and because the depth of field is smaller this time I had to take quite a few more shots I think there were 33 altogether so let's get the alignment process going and it's finally done aligning that took quite a while with so many 21 megapixel images and you can see how the different images were aligned with each other and you can see just how shallow the depth of field is here I'm focused on the back the uh, face is completely out of focus. Let's uh, see one on the other end. And here's one focused on the face of the watch. And you can see the background is completely out of focus, or the back of the watch. Let's now do the second step after I enable all the layers. Okay, then select all the layers. Do the second step, go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. Stack Images go and at last it's done and you can see this document takes six gigabytes because we've got something like 33 layers of 21 megapixel images so let's get this to a more manageable size and <clears throat> merge the layers and now we're down to a much more manageable 185 megabytes so now let's take a look 100 percent and we can see the face completely in focus the back completely in focus we see some little errors here and what we would normally do is uh, have the layers expanded out again to the six gigabytes and just fix that up a little but uh, the rest of it is looking pretty good so that's focus stacking and I wanted to give a shout out to a really great photographer Martin Goldberg who first suggested this uh, topic to me several months ago and pretty much directly led to this video so thanks a lot Morton I hope uh, I did the subject justice and to all of you thank you so much for all this new subscribers to this channel and especially to all the subscribers who've been around for a long time because um, you make this channel really really fun for me to make and I hope you get a lot out of it so thank you and I will talk to you next time <music>